notice. Persons attempting to find a motive in this narrative will be prosecuted. Persons attempting to find a moral in it will be banished. Persons attempting to find a plot in it will be shot. Why, hello there everybody. How are you doing today? It's Emma here, your bookish princess. Today we are celebrating another book birthday. Back in January, it was Pride and Prejudice, and today, on February 18th, it is the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Of course, we all read Mark Twain growing up in school. I just reread Huck Finn last year, and I realized how much I love Huck Finn and Mark Twain. This is just such a fantastic, hilariously funny, insightful, smart, eclectic, different, wonderful book. So I thought to celebrate, I wouldn't do a typical book review. I'd do something a little different. Last summer, my family was taking a trip out west, and we got to stop in Hannibal, Missouri. This was the hometown of one Samuel Langhorne Clemens, AKA Mark Twain. This is where Mark Twain grew up, and a ton of the material in his most popular books, including Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer, was inspired by real life events and people in Hannibal. So there was, in fact, a real life Huckleberry Finn. His name was Tom Blankenship. I think we can agree though, Huckleberry Finn wins that name contest. Huckleberry Finn is just one of my favorite names in literature. I mean, Huckleberry is his first name. It just doesn't get much better than that. When we were in Hannibal, we visited Tom Sawyer's house, Mark Twain's house, Samuel Langhorne Clemens' house, whoever's house you want to call it, we visited there, and Huck Finn's house, um, and walk around the town. To imagine Mark Twain as a boy looking out over that same river and walking those same streets was just so fun. I took a whole bunch of videos while we were there, and it has been on my list to share them because it was such a fun visit. So I thought today would be an excellent day to finally get those videos up. I hope you enjoy it. Without further ado, let's go to Hannibal. We're in Hannibal, you guys. This is a very nice, wide Main Street. Big Muddy Barbecue, what a great name. I wonder like what all was here when Mark Twain was here. Do you think these things were here? And the courthouse. Well, his dad. I looked this up. His father was the inspiration for Judge Thatcher. So his father worked at the courthouse. I'm pretty sure. There is a pool in the middle of this Best Western. This side has a not pool. What's what's in the pool? It's, it changes. Sometimes it's more cool than that. Right now it is um, insect internal organs, maybe. <laughs> Just Mark Twain. Just Mark Twain, MVD. This is home of Mark Twain Fried Chicken. We saw this sign um, from the road, and so Sold. we're getting some. Instantly. Not it's Kentucky. Not, it's Mark Twain fried, like as he would have fried the chicken. And I'm sure he knew he lived here. Yeah, he, he was a chef. That's yeah, what he's famous uh, for. This place, Mark Twain. Yeah, that guy. Huck Finn is a book yeah. of recipes. Yes. Yeah, it's so funny. Gosh. The Mark Twain dinette has a renowned liar's table. You guys, this is Mark Twain's house right over here. And Becky Thatcher's house. I mean, the fictional. The real life Becky Thatcher. The girl, the little girl that Mark Twain based it on. Based Be Becky Thatcher on. This is the museum and gift shop. Here's Becky Thatcher's place. Tom Sawyer's first sweetheart. We're gonna come look at this in the daytime too. It's the fence, guys! It's the Tom Sawyer fence right there. We're in Mark Twain's hometown of Hannibal, Missouri today. And I got up early to watch the sunrise, which I'm sure it is rising somewhere behind those clouds. We're gonna read a quote from Huckleberry Finn about the sunrise. Two or three days and nights went by. I reckon I might say they swum by. They slid along so quiet and smooth and lovely. Here's the way we put in the time. It was a monstrous big river down there, sometimes a mile and a half wide. We run nights and laid up and hid daytime. Then we set out the lines. There are all these fish. No wonder they set out the lines. They've, I'm sure they caught a million things. Next we, slid into the, next we slid into the river and had a swim, so as to freshen up and cool off. Then we sat down on the sandy bottom where the water was about knee deep and watched the daylight come. Not a sound anywhere. It was perfectly still. Just like the whole world was asleep, only sometimes the bullfrogs would clutter and maybe. The first thing to see looking away over the water was a kind of dull line. That was the woods on the other side. You could make nothing else out. 
then a pale place in the sky, then more paleness spreading around, then the river softened up away off and weren't black anymore, but gray. You could see little dark spots drifting along ever so far. Then an ice breeze springs up and comes fanning you from over there, so cool and fresh and sweet to smell on account of the woods and flowers. But sometimes not that way because they've left dead fish lying around, guards and such, and they do get pretty rank. <laughs> I like how it's like this wonderfully beautiful description, and then, yeah. And next you've got the full day and everything's smiling in the sun and the songbirds just going it. The songbirds just going it. Isn't that the best? See, I was wondering what those um, streaks in the river were and they must be, Huck Finn says, they're from... Um, snags. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, we just realized that's an island. It's like Tom Sawyer Island. Maybe they have paintbrushes hidden there right now. If we went over, we could get a fast pass. <laughs> it's like the Three Mile Island that Huck and Jim run away to in the book. What does it say? Afterwards, we would watch the lonesomeness of the river and kind of lazy along, and by and by, lazy off to sleep. Wake up by and by and look to see what done it, and maybe see a steamboat coughing along upstream. So far off toward the other side, you couldn't tell nothing about her. Yes, no steamboats today. That would be pretty cool to see steamboats. And there's Mark Twain, right here. Samuel Langhorn Clemens. He used to be a steamboat pilot before he went out to Nevada. Good old Mark Twain. So here's the river right here. And Mark Twain's house is right down that street. So he was really, really close where the brick is. That's Becky Thatcher's and Mark Twain's is just behind those trees. Guys, this looks just like Doc Hudson's garage. Look at all the old fashioned pop bottles and the old fashioned cars. Oh my gosh, it's Mater, you guys. It's Mater. Right there. Isn't that his kind of truck? It looks just like him. Only painted differently. That's a really cute car. So there is Mark Twain's house. And there's the fence that Tom Sawyer whitewashed. Kinda awesome. And here's the downtown. It's really cute. I love the buildings. They're really cool. This feels like a Main Street USA kind of place. No wonder it's a Main Street kind of place. It's actually called Main Street. <laughs> there is historic Hannibal. That street right there. And look, there's a statue of Huck and Finn right here. And just up where I just was, they have Becky's Butterfly Garden. I like it. And there's the Mississippi. I get to be Huck Finn because I have the hat. You can be Tom Sawyer. Although Tom Sawyer is more imaginative and reads more. So maybe I should be Tom Sawyer and you should be Huck Finn. But Huck Finn Please has don't throw book. me into that briar patch. <laughs> that's not, it's not, it's not Mark Twain. No. Not the briar patch. Skin me if you want a prayer, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> the town of Hannibal helped to shape Sam Clemens into Mark Look, Twain. It's, um, it's Mark Twain's dogs. Really? Yeah, they're actual, his actual dogs. I don't see there. any dogs back there. Yeah, look, there's, there's oh, you're right, there are. Look at that. Look, guys, puppy. Here, I love these quotes from the autobiography. Recently someone in Missouri sent me a picture of the house I was born in. Here to forever I always stated it was a palace, but I should be more guarded now. And this one is so sweet. In the small town of Hannibal, everybody was poor but didn't know it, and everybody was comfortable and didn't know it. So cool. Wow, so Sam Mark Twain knew Uncle Daniel, who told the tales that Uncle Remus would write down, which would later become Song of the South. So actually, you were right. Song of the South and the rabbit do have connections to Mark Twain. So, Tom Sawyer's house is that way. Huck Finn's house, we're gonna have a quick look at, is right up here. This is supposed to be the house of Huck Finn, or rather Tom Blankensop, Blankenship. 
We're in Tom Sawyer's house now, or rather, Mark Twain's house. No, it's just back. Oh, wow. wow. This is like, that's kind of fun. His characters. A man's experiences of life are a book. There was never yet an uninteresting life. Such a thing is an impossibility. Here's the Clemens' kitchen. I don't see any lightning rod. We're trying to figure out which is um, Mark Twain's room or Sam Clemens' room. I don't think they know, but there was a quote about how there was a very convenient lightning rod right next to his window, just like in Tom's letter. Look at the hoop skirts, guys. His Aunt Polly would have worn them, or Sam's mother. Here are all his books. Oh boy, this is Becky Thatcher's house. There's Becky. You guys, it's Mark Twain and Becky Thatcher. When they were older, they didn't actually get married, but they met up again because they were friends. That's adorable. So this white house is Tom Sawyer's boyhood home, and there's the fence. It's so cool. Every day a boy gets to whitewash a fence. I'm supervising. I want my dead mouse back. <laughs>